our folks who are going to analyze what happened tonight. Democratic strategist Terrence Woodbury and Republican strategist Sue Zoldak, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. So clearly we had a very spirited debate, not as spirited as the presidential debate, but still there were some interesting moments. Let me ask you both about an exchange where you think your candidate did well. I'm going to start with Terrence. Terrence, where did you think Harris did particularly well at making a point? Terrence, are you there? Okay, let's turn it over to Sue, uh, and we'll try to reconnect there with Terrence. Uh, Sue, let me ask you, where do you think your candidate did well? Was there a particular exchange that stood out for you? Definitely. I mean, there were many exchanges, I think, that uh, Vice President Pence did well. But I think when he pressed for an answer about the Supreme Court and packing the Supreme Court, and uh, Senator Harris specifically ignored that question multiple times, um, including the fact that the Biden campaign has refused to release a list of possible Supreme Court nominees. Um, you know, they're claiming that they want the opportunity to select a nominee, and yet they won't even release a list of possibilities. Um, I think the avoidance of that is just really telling about how they want to play politics with this issue, as opposed to, you know, following the rule of the law and also allowing the Supreme Court to be, you know, a different branch of government. Okay, so Terrence, let me turn that over to you. I was asking, was there a particular exchange or a moment where you thought Harris did particularly well? Absolutely. You know, the number one issue in America, across all demographics, across all geography, younger Americans, older Americans, is, is COVID-19. And I think Senator Harris tonight did, did a fantastic job of indicting this administration on their gross negligence, their failure, their, their, and their, their inability to protect and keep the American people safe. And she sat on the stage with the leader, this government's leader on the coronavirus task force. And, and, and frankly, I think that she showed his inability to lead this charge and why, and, and, and why they, they have failed the American people so oh, horribly. Okay, so let me turn that over to you, because it is the biggest topic, I would say, of the night, and that's what Americans are looking for, leadership. Do you think Penn did a job, a good job, of defending how the pandemic has been handled? And we remind people that he's chair of the task force. I think this is where, especially in the United States media, people just fail to understand the mind of a conservative and respect that what we first and foremost want from our leaders is freedom, freedom to make our own decisions and not to live in a nanny state. Um, and that exactly is the point that Vice President Pence made. Um, and, you know, the media doesn't like to give Republicans or conservatives credit for making that point because they don't get it. Okay, so we're the media having this exchange right now, right? Let's talk a little bit more, Sue, then. Uh, you talk about freedom, and that we all understand, and that's core to Americans, but 210,000 lives have been lost in the country. There doesn't seem to be a straightforward plan set out by the president and the vice president on how they're going to stem that tide. And I want to know whether you think they've handled the pandemic well, and if you see a plan that perhaps I don't. I mean, it's not our party that sent, you know, aging adults back into a, 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 a home where there's a pandemic. The point is, those people who are vulnerable should protect themselves, and those people who are not vulnerable should be allowed to go about their daily lives. I mean, if you look at uh, the dashboard that the New York Times published, there, the infection rate of, for example, teachers who are teaching completely at home right now is 0.28%. The infection rate of teachers who are teaching 100% in school is actually 0.02% lower than that. This, this is the America that supports Donald Trump, the Americans that follow the facts. School okay, should be open. Okay. School should be open, and, and some places they are, but, but at the same time, uh, Donald Trump was late to to wearing a mask and asking Americans to wear a mask. He took his mask off just the other day, even though he just got out of the hospital uh, to be treated for COVID-19. This is unbelievable. I I'm sorry, this is unbelievable. The, the complete uh, neglect of responsibility here, the number one responsibility of government is to, is to protect their people from all, from all enemies, foreign and domestic. We are under attack by a virus that is reaping havoc on this country, on our economy, 
specifically on the black community who is overwhelmingly and disproportionately impacted by this and to hear the, that that the, that the, that this responsibility can be negated for freedom and for convenience it is unbelievable not only has this president been late to wearing a mask he scolded people for wearing a mask he at this point the white house is it is it is a super spreading uh, 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 entity and the president has not only failed to protect the American people, he's putting them in harm and danger every day. And, and we cannot get to November 3rd fast enough to replace this administration. Sue, do you think they have done enough to protect Americans from COVID-19? You know, I'm, I'm not a scientist, you know, and I think that um, the fact is many millions of lives have been saved by stopping the travel by allowing people to local jurisdictions to make their own choices on whether to keep open or close. How have lives been saved by deciding to keep things open? Because there's many lives that are in danger of being in hunger. Um, there's children that are not being reported for being abused. Absolutely, there's suicides. I mean, in the school district that I am in right now, there have been multiple suicides, much, many more that are not reported to the news just in this past school year. So absolutely, we're saving lives because you don't count, you're not counting the lives that are impacted by these choices that people are not making based on actual science. Okay, so let me ask you, just, yeah. can I, I ask you, let me, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just ask Sue, there are 210,000 Americans who have died, the biggest death toll by far in the world. And I just want to get your take on the number of lives lost. Of course, losing lives is extremely, extremely tragic. I mean, no one is questioning that. But again, this is the path of the media to kind of conflate wanting people to follow science and trying to say, well, Donald Trump doesn't care about people dying. I mean, those two things don't logically follow from each other. Okay. I do Listen, want... I, Go ahead, Terrence. Go I, ahead. I, I, I'm sorry, because because I, I do think that we have to follow science. And like Susan, I am not a scientist, and that is why I defer to scientists. And I'm so glad that Kamala Harris today made it a point to, to demonstrate how this administration has has been has has been at, at odds in a conflict with science throughout this conflict. The president called his own I mean basically accused his own CDC director of perjury when when the CDC director sat before uh, Congress and told Americans to wear a mask. I mean this is an administration that is in conflict with science um, that 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 is, for all intents and purposes, putting Americans at harm and danger every day. I think Kamala Harris did a fantastic job today of indicting this administration, not just on being complicit, but on, but on, but in fact on being guilty of, of, of putting American lives at harm. Okay, so I, I want to take a step back because we've been talking about uh, the virus to start, but I also want to know, were there other issues or an issue specifically that you were looking forward to hearing about maybe an expansion of policy or a defensive policy that you did hear tonight and were happy to hear an exchange on that? Terrence, I'll start with you on that one. Uh, absolutely. You know, what I really wanted to see tonight was, was uh, Kamala Harris to demonstrate first that she is prepared to be president. I do believe that this is a question that, 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 uh, that voters have um, as we are facing an election with the two oldest candidates in the history of our, of our elections. And I think she had to demonstrate that she was ready to be present on day one. Um, I also think that she had to make a very clear contrast on issues like, uh, like health care, in which she, has, she, she clearly explained that the Biden-Harris administration would not only sustain and protect the Affordable Care Act, but expand it and, I, and frankly, I think she, did, she also did a fantastic job of pointing out the hypocrisy um, of, the, of the Trump administration, who continues to say that they won't um, repeal pre-existing conditions while they are currently in court fighting cases to do so. We have been hearing since 2015, when Donald Trump first ran for president, that he has a plan that is going to be cheaper and better. We, not only have we never heard this plan, neither him or Mike Pence tonight did a, did a very good job of explaining what this, uh, this, this untold, unseen, and unheard plan could be. All right, Sue, I'll turn that back to you. Was there uh, some sort of discussion, things that you wanted to learn more about that you learned tonight? Well, I think it's 
really important to understand that when Kamala Harris was uh, posed the question about what she would do in the event that um, the nominee, you know, Joe Biden was unable to serve, she specifically never said anything that she would do. She specifically used Joe Biden will not do this or Joe Biden will do that. She very specifically during that segment never used the word I. And that is because she is a far left radical liberal, the most liberal senator in the United States history, who, by the way, has missed 49 percent of her votes. Um, she is only, you know, the only second place to that is Cory Booker, who has missed 35 percent of his votes. Um, so it's not even close. Um, but the point is that, you know, she very smartly hid her opinions about what she would do if she was president. And I agree with Terrence. We should be concerned about what is in her mind. And that's what American voters are, need to ask themselves. Um, you need to ask yourselves, are you ready for a far-left radical president? Because is that what you signed up for? Okay. I do have to leave the conversation there because uh, I have to move on, but I appreciate both of you sharing your time with us tonight, Terrence Woodbury and Sue Zoldak. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much. All right. The Democratic vice presidential nominee, Kamala Harris, opened the debate with some pretty harsh words for the Trump administration.